Greetings, and welcome to episode 71. In today's episode, we'll be discussing the inner journey. <clears throat> Actually, today's episode was going to be how a person can exist in a corrupt and cr cruel world, but uh, that uh, title was a little bit long, so I just said the inner journey. <laughs> anyway, if we're ready, let's get started. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, how a person can exist in a corrupt and cruel world, or the inner journey. <laughs> what does that mean from my point of view? Because, let's remember that all of these videos are based on my point of view, based on my experience. So, if you have some feedback or a rebuttal or you want to argue or play devil's advocate, that's fine. But bear in mind that this isn't based on your life experiences. This is based on my 41 years on the planet. So, the inner journey or how I make it possible for me to exist in a corrupt and cruel environment. It just first it's hard in this day and age of information to exist without some knowledge of the outside world. And I don't just mean what goes on right outside in your neighborhood, but the outside world, uh different states, different countries, so on and so forth. And everything seems to be getting worse and coming to a head. And even before that, it was still pretty bad. But I have found that if you... I mean, be aware of your surroundings, to be sure. But the adventure, your personal adventure is on the inside. And how you... I don't want to say escape from it. But how you can lessen the effects of this corruption and this cruelty is to focus more on your inner journey. Try not to integrate that cruelty and that corruption into your daily life. Some people say, can't beat them, join them. Some people it's just uh, automatic response, monkey see, monkey do. And some people are, well, when in Rome, do as the Romans, you know. Well, so and so's doing it. <laughs> that kind of mentality. Which, fine, if that's your deal, I mean, every expression is valid. If that is the way you function in the world and that's how you cope, that's how you cope, and I'm not going to judge you for it. If that's how you get through it, that's how you get through it. This is how I get through it. I, uh, I focus on the inner journey, I focus on the things about myself I'd like to correct. Uh, bear in mind that doesn't mean that I don't see things wrong in the world around me that I wouldn't like to correct but also I bear in mind that the minute I I speak and voice my opinion about what I see that is wrong in the world now I'm entering into politics and that's that that's a whole another conversation for a whole different day. I don't do politics. I try to stay well away from politics. This is not a political opinion channel. This is a personal discovery and spiritual enlightenment channel. I have no interest in politics as it exists in our world today. It just this that that represents 80% of the corruption of which I speak in the first place and the cruelty comes from everyday man against everyday man or even the powers that be against everyday man or however you choose to see it and even just discussing this little bit of it is still in my opinion getting too far into politics so to go back to my previous point it's easy to get caught up in it and, and get yourself riled up and and start to lose faith in the journey you started way back when you have to know that 
becoming something you already despise, something you despise about the world around you, becoming more of that in no way, shape, or form helps to fix the problem. If you actively and consciously become part of the problem, there's no way you can help fix the problem. And people say, well, if you're not helping to fix the problem, well, this particular problem is a problem due to participation, mass participation. So the fewer people that participate, you don't have to stand up and rally against it, just don't participate. And the more people you can get, I mean, yeah, maybe every once in a while talk to somebody about it. Because the less people participating, the less of a problem there is. The fewer corrupt people, then we no longer focus on the corruption. We'll have something else to focus on. But how do you not focus on all the negativity that you see? Because as I said, be mindful of your surroundings, be it your immediate surroundings, that 50, 50 mile radius fishbowl that they say that um, a human will live his entire life in, or maybe you keep track of news from around the world, you know, your local news, national news, global news, whatever. I mean, I think in this day and age, it is important to stay informed, but I also don't think you should let that information rule your life. The journey is on the inside, not the outside. The answers you're looking for aren't out there in that corrupt and cruel world. That they're in here. And uh, a lot of people say, well, you see what's in you. And that's, that's not true. That's, I mean, that's true to an extent. We see what, what's in us and we dislike about the world that which we dislike about ourselves. But just because you correct it in yourself doesn't mean it's going to vanish from the world. Just because you're saying, well, I choose to see the good, doesn't mean that the, the, the cruelty and the corruption is just going to vanish. It just means that you're not focusing on it. That's no different, in my opinion, than turning a blind eye. Now, I actively don't participate, which means I'm not turning a blind eye so much as I keep an eye on what's going on. And then I actively don't participate in the things that I see as corruption or cruelty. Because, like I said, the problem becomes, the problem starts when we get participation. And at this point, we have this mass participation from everybody on the planet, pretty much. Because every, no one wants to get left behind uh, financially, emotionally, physically, whatever. Nobody wants to be left behind, so everybody chooses to participate. And granted, I am still part of what we consider to be society in the fact that I have a job, I pay bills, you know, I have a place to live, I have a car, all this and that. And I have, you know, my, my, my personal baubles and doodads and whatnot. But beyond that, I don't participate beyond that. Not in the, the grand scheme. I'm not trying to hustle to make dollars. I'm not. Money has never been the focus of my life. My focus is on the inner journey. That's where I put my focus. So that's what I got good at. I know several people that are really, really good at making lots and lots of money very, very quickly. But none of them have the level of understanding that I do about life. The length of their level of understanding, the depth and birth of their level of understanding is make money and not just make money make more money than the next guy because in that making of the money lies your self-worth your self-esteem your your uh, your relationship to the world around you is based entirely on how fat your wallet is and frankly I just don't see it that way <laughs> I see it, you aren't what you do for a living. You are not what you do for a living. That is not now, nor has it ever been where my confidence comes from, or my self-worth. Self, uh, you are not the size of your wallet. That also has never been where my confidence and self-worth come from. 
you are who you are. What you do for a living is how you pay your bills. I heard someone say once, well, you could tell a lot about a man by what he does for a living. No, you can't do tell anything. The only thing you can tell by what a man does for a living is how well he's living financially. Can he pay his bills? Can he afford to eat? That's the only thing you can tell from what a man do, does for a living. The inner journey, keeping track of you, dispels all that. You don't need any of it. That's why I can work at a gas station and I don't feel any less of a man or human being than, say, when I was a truck driver, which I plan on getting that, getting back into that but not because, well, it made me feel better. No, I, there's just <coughs> certain things I want out of life. And to get those things, I need more money. And to get that money, there are certain sacrifices I'm going to have to make. When one of those is to go back into truck driving. But that's not good. It's not going to make me feel, <coughs> excuse me. That's not going to make me feel any better as a human being. Be because I increased my suffering so that I could increase my income so that I could, could afford to buy the things I want to buy for myself. Oh. It just it's never really made very much sense to me why someone who works at a gas station is frowned upon Whereas someone that works at a bank isn't frowned upon. When it's my understanding that the banks are the enemy. It's my understanding that these, these, these businessmen are the enemy. But they're still praised in society. You know? The businessman will walk into the gas station and try and belittle the clerk because he makes more money. And even people that are poor, well, then they're not poor, but they don't work at a gas station. So they, 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 they assume, well, that's beneath me. So that means he's beneath me. That means I can go in and belittle him. And they, they try to come in with the attitude that you work for me. No, I don't work for you. I work for this other gentleman. <laughs> and he really doesn't pay me for my dignity, and I'm not going to give it to you. <laughs> you know, there's been several times where people will come in and, have a haughty attitude until they find out that yeah I, this isn't what I usually do for a living I'm technically in between jobs and then they change their tune oh so maybe I can respect you because and maybe you're not beneath me you're just in between jobs but what difference would it make I'm not gonna lie I work at a gas station I absolutely love my job I don't appreciate making so very little <laughs> but I love my job if I was in a position to make as much money doing what I do right now as I do when I uh, am driving a semi truck, I would stick to what I'm doing now. I mean, I, I absolutely love it. There's nothing, in my opinion, wrong with working at a gas station or working at a restaurant or working anywhere. Because, in my opinion, you're not a better person than me just because of what you do for a living. You're certainly not a better person than me just because you make more money. I don't see it that way. Because we want two different things out of life, you assume that you're a better person than me. And life just simply does not work that way. I think judging a person on what they do for a living is the same as judging a person on what they look like. I, I mean, and I say this all the time, if you are a 10 on the outside and a 3 on the inside, you're a 3. The same goes for what you do for a living. If your financial standing is 10, but your character is a 3, you're still just a 3. <laughs> <laughs> so what difference does it make? I would rather have my financial standing be 3 and my character be 10. I would rather be my 
physical appearance be three, and my uh, my inside, my inner beauty, my personality, I'd rather that be a ten. And people don't see it that way because people are so caught up in the, the cruelty and corruption. These same people that come into the store and want to belittle me for what I do for a living will go home and tell themselves they're good people. Oh, I'm a good person. To people of the same economic standing, they leave that part out. To people of the same color, they leave that part out. To people without tattoos, I mean the list is endless. To people without tattoos, to people that aren't ugly, to people that aren't fat. <laughs> I'm kind to this small group of people, I'm a good person. If you're only a good person to less than 1% of the population, you're not a good person. When people come into my store... If you treat me with respect, I treat you with respect. If you don't treat me with respect, I don't treat you at all. I ring you up without saying a word to you. And then you can leave. And then you get to hear me be really cool to the person that was behind you. <laughs> I've got a customer, a regular customer, that comes into my store. My first day working at this gas station, they have a, a register system that I've never worked with. Because I've worked in retail before. I've worked at gas stations before. And this system is newer than any system I've ever used before. And I was having a rough time, and he just happened to be in line. And it took longer to get the transaction done than either one of us would have liked, to the point where I had to call the owner who was in the back doing paperwork. I had to call the owner up front for help. And this guy was just shitty to me. So I got him his transaction done. Since that day, whenever that man comes in, I'm not mean to him. I'm not nice to him. I have no opinion, good or bad. I don't wish good things or bad things on the man. When he comes in, I'm straight to it. Get your transaction done and get you out the door. Because that's what you showed me. You will, That's the only thing you wanted from me. And now he acts like he would like to apologize to me for doing what he did. Because he showed me the kind of person he was that first day I ever met him. That all he wanted was a speedy tra transaction, so that's all he gets from me is a speedy transaction. Boom, boom, boom. See, if I talk to you and I make jokes with you, that makes the transaction last longer than you would like. Why would I do anything to prolong the transaction when you've already shown me your displeasure in a lengthy transaction? So, boom. You come in, I date, take care of you, you get out. If you linger, that's your business. The transaction is done. But I will detain <laughs> other customers and not tell them they can't leave, but just sit there making jokes, chit-chatting about their day, you know, how's it going? Because that's what they showed me they want. They want a guy that's going to be cool with them and be like, hey, how you doing? I'm like the bartender. If you're, if you're looking down, I'm going to say something. Hey, you having a bad day? Hey, hang in there, you know. <clears throat> a little advice on the way out the door. Hey, try this. This works for me. Hey, have a good one. Bye. But this, that's what they've shown me they wanted from me, was a little kindness and understanding. This guy showed me that if I don't hurry the fuck up, he's going to be pissed off. So that's all he gets from me. That's not being me being an asshole. That's what he demanded from me, so that's what he gets. And now he regrets his decision. To the point where other employees have told me this man says he hates me. <laughs> And I've done nothing to him other than perform the action that he requested to the best of my ability whenever he shows up. Get him done. Boom, 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 boom. No chit-chat. No happy face. Get it done. I don't want to detain you any longer than is necessary to perform the transaction. Granted, I am choosing to suffer at this point. The moment has been long since passed. But because that's what he showed me, that's what I give him. First impressions, are they say first impressions are everything. And they are. Because you were an asshole to me the first day you ever met me, my first day ever working in that place. 
And he was the only guy that's ever been that way to me. Well, he's not the only guy, but he's the only guy that's ever been that way to me and is a regular customer. <laughs> because he's shown me that's who he is, that's what he gets from me. I don't open the door for witty banter as I do with the rest of my customers. And he's seen that. He's been not the first person in line. He's been two or three people back seeing me interact with the customers and the witty banter and the, hey, how you doing? And then he gets up to the line and boom, transaction only. And then as soon as he's out of the line, he sees me go back to the witty banter. So he's seen it. He sees that it's just him getting this treatment. People like that succumb to the cruelty and the corruption. And I have no choice but to deal with him on his level. And like I said, granted, I can choose not to suffer and I can still deal with him on the level that I'm accustomed to, which is the witty banter and the, the, the understanding and concern and all that. But I really don't feel it in me. I mean, maybe I just haven't reached that point. And it's not even about forgiveness. I'm not mad at the man anymore. I stopped being mad at the man. I'd probably say the day it happened, I suffered pretty much the rest of the day from what he did to me. But after that, it's no longer about me suffering. It's about giving the man what he demanded I give him, which was a speedy transaction. People don't realize they do that to one another. That's what I said, that some people succumb to this this system simply, you know, as an automatic or should I say autonomic fun function, monkey see, monkey do. Everyone else is an asshole. I'm going to be an asshole. I'm going to get my two bits. But this man came in and put me beneath him because of what I do for a living. I don't accept that from him, but I'm not in, really in a position to say anything. And that man showed me in that moment that no matter who he's nice to, in that moment, that man's character was he is a three. And I have treated him as a three ever since. And, man, and I'm be the first to admit that I'm probably wrong in that. And I should give him another chance, but yeah, you know, yeah. You know. <laughs> he showed me he was a three, so I treat him like a three. And he doesn't like that. He doesn't like that I don't give him the witty banter and back and forth like I do the rest of my customers. But I am entitled to have an opinion, regardless of if I'm spiritual or not. I'm entitled to have an opinion, and my opinion is as such that he's an asshole, and I'm not going to be nice to him. I'm not going to go out of my way for someone that couldn't give me an extra few minutes to figure something out on my first day of work. Well, you prove you're the better person. I didn't yell at the guy. I've never raised my voice to him, ever. Didn't give him dirty looks, didn't slight him. So, I don't, I don't really see that I'm doing anything wrong, but it does make me giggle when I think about it, <laughs> that I could still do it differently. That wouldn't make me the better person, though. This man chose to negatively affect my day, and it worked. He neg negatively affected my day. Had it not been my first day of work, he probably would not have been able to affect my day so much. But, as it turns out, it was my first day of work, and he affected me greatly. And don't get me wrong, there's been times where... Uh, I've been the one in that position, and I didn't handle it. I handled it much like he did, a, a situation where I would have been considered the three. And I make no excuse for my actions other than, oops, my bad. You know, the, the moments where you would love to go back in and apologize, where you screw up somebody's inner journey for the day. Uh, what I do for a living, the, reason, one, the, the main reason why it doesn't cause me to feel less than anyone is because I am in a position 
to make or break the day of everybody that comes in there because they could come in and I could be an asshole to them and it completely ruins their day or night or evening or wherever whatever time they come in or I could be the brightest spot of their day they come in and I make them laugh I cheer them up or do whatever just doing my job this is why I love my job so much this is why you can't say well I drive a, a Beamer and blah 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 or I drive a Jaguar or whatever I'm better than you and it always makes me giggle because the people that drive the really nice cars and they try to come in like and they want you to look when they tell you what pump they're on or they'll tell you the wrong pump so you have to look out and see what what car they're driving and they're like yeah I'm in the Jaguar can I have five dollars <laughs> in gas and it's like okay you're better than me you're driving a better car here's your five dollars in gas <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that kind of lifestyle that kind of living doesn't make any sense to me and it used to when I was a kid let me repeat that living like having more money or a better job than somebody used to make sense to me that that kind of stuff made you a better person but when I thought that way I was a child It amazes me that people carry this way of thinking on into adulthood and end up living their entire life according to if I have more money or a better job, I'm better than you. And this is how they live their life. There's no way you can compare to them. You're not on my level. Well, maybe not financially, but sit down. Let me make you feel stupid for a minute. <laughs> and I could, but I don't. And if they don't treat me, I don't care if they have that air of arrogance because they have a little bit of money in their pocket or they're doing okay. As long as they don't treat me like I am beneath them, I won't treat them in any way. I'll treat them, you know, I'll still witty banter and, and jokes and blah, 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 blah. And they love it. And even people that come in with that, huh. I'm speaking to you. Oh, I had to lower myself to speak to you. Even people that come in with that air, by the time they leave, they're laughing their asses off at some joke I've made, or they're smiling, or they genuinely want to come back because I might be working. Because I'm good at what I do. I'm good at everything I do. That's not the point. The point is if we focus too much on the outer journey like this guy what he did to me my first day of work I could have let that affect me to the point where I treated everybody the way I treat him but instead I only let it affect me so much so that I only, and I don't treat him badly. I don't say, it's you. And I don't give him dirty looks. And I don't do this. I say, what can I do for you? And I get him what he needs. And I give him, and I, you know, I get the transaction done and he goes on his way. So, technically, I'm not doing anything wrong. It's not me being a better or worse person. He wishes he could get more from me. I'm not willing to give that more to him because of what he did to me but I'm not bad to him he cut himself off from my best I no longer offer him my absolute best that's not to say I don't give a hundred percent to this guy that just means he's not getting my best because a hundred percent let's face it that ain't the best a <laughs> hundred percent is what's required by company policy but what we do as human beings, we give 110, 120, 150 percent, sometimes 200 <laughs> percent. So, that was, to me, that was the perfect example of inner outer journey. Because my inner journey says, 
give to these people. Make sure they leave here with a smile on their face. But his outer journey, or his inner journey, caused me to bring the outer journey inward and assess a situation based on the outward journey, the cruelty aspect of the system, of the world around me. Now granted, had I been leaning more heavily on my inner journey and my understanding, I would have just phase it off but from what I'm told this guy treats if not everybody quite a few people this way so that's just him but that doesn't excuse his actions and you could say well that doesn't excuse your actions but I've had no negative actions against the guy I just only give him a hundred percent and I'd like to hear from anybody whether or not that's bad to only give a hundred percent because I'm only really required to give 100%. Anything over 100% is extra. <laughs> anyway, we are about to the 30 minute mark. So I'm going to go ahead and call it. And this has been about the inner journey. And I know I hit that, that anecdote <laughs> and kind of extended that out, but I wanted to kind of shine a light on what exactly I'm talking about. Character versus status versus what have you. Because the man that did that to me, who wanted to treat me like I'm less than him, the man lives on disability and is, uh, and is at the poverty line and doing worse than me. But because I work as a clerk at a gas station, he treats me that, that he treats me as though I'm beneath him, less than him. I don't treat anyone that way. Not even when homeless people come in do I treat them like they're less than me. I treat them the way they expect to be treated. I treat them the way they treat me. If you come in and treat me like you're a human being deserving of respect, that's what you get. If you come in and treat me any other way, that's how you're going to be treated. Because that's what you're telling me you've grown accustomed to. Anyway, I said I was going to call it, so I'm going to call it. <laughs> if you have enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. Uh, you can favorite it if you want. Please leave comments down below as it is a discussion, and I want to hear your point of view. You know, you Tell me something you've been through and how you dealt with it uh, as it concerns the inner journey and uh, how that helps you to interact with the world around you being corrupt and negative and just cruel there's no other way to say it it's just corrupt and cruel it pretty much encompasses everything <laughs> anyway if you would like to keep coming back and getting this type of information or you just like the sound of my voice then go ahead and hit the subscribe button but until next time you hang in there <laughs> <laughs>